Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands to heaven and give Jesus praise. Lift your hands to heaven and bless his name. He's the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Alpha, Omega, the beginning and the ending. Father, we bless you and we honor you. Someone giving God quality thanks tonight. Bless him in the spirit. Bless him with your understanding. The miracle walker, the mighty God, the Lord in the midst of his people, strong, mighty. Go ahead and pray. They go from strength to strength as many as appear before the Lord in Zion. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, give me an encounter tonight by your spirit. Lift your voice and pray. Give me an encounter tonight by your spirit. Give me an encounter tonight even by your spirit. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Someone pray. Give me an encounter. Transform my life. Let your word speak mightily over my life. For in Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. The ignorant believer will always be a defeated believer. Being a believer notwithstanding, the ignorant believer will always be a defeated believer. What gives value to the life of God that we have received is the knowledge component that activates it. Are we together? So just because we are recipients of eternal life does not mean that we will enjoy the potential that has come with that life. The life of God that has been administered to us on account of salvation is knowledge dependent. Knowledge dependent. That means in as much as you are saved, if you do not contend for light, high level spiritual illumination, there is a limit to which your life can, may not cross beyond. And so every time we are gathered it's not just a time of worship. It is a feast of light. That God is opening your eyes to see something you have not seen before or to see it in a way you have not seen it before. Hallelujah. Paul prayed and he said that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know there are things you need to know to reign. There are things you need to know to excel. There are things you need to know to tame life and exert the dominion of the saints. And this is why you are gathered tonight. That means your enemy tonight will be whosoever or whatsoever stops you from this project of getting light, the true light. Anything that distracts you, anyone that distracts you has become an enemy to your destiny. Hallelujah. Because in this kingdom, we only arise and we shine when our light comes. He says, arise and shine for your light is come. I'm praying for someone already in the name of Jesus. Every challenge that brought you here, may something you hear tonight lift you above that challenge. I say it again and I speak it unto you. Every challenge that brought you here tonight, may something you hear tonight lift you above that challenge. Hear me. Hear me. Every dimension of your life that is bankrupt of revelation is the dimension that will exert dominion over you. We rise in life on account of the light that we receive. I'm saying this to someone who is seated and wondering, Lord, is this how my life will be? No. 
if you only submit yourself like Mary did. Martha was running around trying to get things done and Mary sat quietly to listen and he said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things. He says, but one thing is needful and this Mary has chosen to sit at the master's feet. It is impossible to come before the presence of the living God and open your heart to receive and then return the way you came. Not the God of the Bible. Hallelujah. Look beyond the challenges that you came here with. Look beyond the times. Look beyond the economy. Look beyond your pain. Let your eyes be on Jesus tonight. Knowing that one word from the Lord. You've had the testimonies of the people. God is not a herbalist. There is an exact communication of faith on your own part for the word to work for you they heard the word like we did it says but the word did not profit them not be mixed with faith in them that heard it so hearing it is only the first layer you must believe that God is talking to me when you come to church forget about the subject of us the moment the word is coming it is God and me and my destiny did you hear that God me and my destiny Lord what do you have to tell me today to make me wiser to make me more powerful what do I need to see today that will grant me dominion over elemental forces dominion over that which limits mortal men the proof that you met God is that you must rise higher than whatever challenge brought you to his presence the value of an encounter with God is that you will live ascended higher than the limitations that brought you. I pray for someone again. By the time you are sharing the grace, it will be from an elevated standpoint in the spirit. And let me tell you one truth. Because you have left all to pay attention while you are listening to him, may angels I'm speaking only to believers. I'm speaking only to believers, not hearers, believers. May the Lord release angels to begin to sort various aspects of your life in the name of Jesus. For someone, let me prophesy over you. This battle is not your own. Step back and watch God the warrior fight for you. Did you hear that? This battle is not for you. Step back and watch the mighty God step in for you. He says the Lord will fight for you and you will hold your peace. I say it unto you, my God will fight for you and you will hold your peace in the name of Jesus. Hear me? There are times God gives you the strategy for victory. He will tell you go around Jericho seven times, but there are times he will tell you get out of the way. This is not your battle. I sense that someone has come into a season where your strength has failed. You have done everything you know to do. You have done everything you need to do. In the name of Jesus, may the God of vengeance, in the name of Jesus, may the mighty one who is bigger than you, stronger than you, wiser than you, may he step in on your behalf. May he step in on your behalf. May he step in on your behalf. In the name of Jesus. For someone I'm speaking over you, you have cried, you will not cry again. You have cried, you will not cry again. And the reason why you will not cry again is because the Bible says, weeping endures, not forever, but for a night. It says joy comes with the morning. And I've taught you here that morning is not just a chronological passage of time. I have taught you that the morning happens when your light comes. He called the light day and the darkness he called night. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, weeping comes to an end. Shame comes to an end. Reproach comes to an end. Struggles come to an end. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says for your shame you will receive double again I'm speaking to believers for everyone who has a face to believe this week I prophesy to you by the God who gave gifts to men may my God surprise you 
May my God surprise you. Things you did not expect, may they begin to happen for you. Hear me? And everyone who has laughed at you and mocked at your God, may this be the week God puts them to shame. Hallelujah. You believe what you just heard? I sense in my spirit that whilst we are here, there are things that God is sorting out. Honestly, sorting out in the lives of people. Things, some, some of you have even given up on it. You have said, forget about this. And God is speaking to someone. You have closed Lazarus in the tomb, but roll away the stone. I know it is three days, but roll away the stone because he wants to bring Lazarus out. Everything that is dead, everything that is dying in your life, your health, your finances, your relationships, let it hear the word of the Lord. By the power that raised Christ from the dead this night, this moment, it jacks back to life now. Hear me? This is a prophetic family. You must believe in the power of prophecy and its ability to lift you. Don't sit wondering, is it true? Is this all? Is this how God works? No, don't be like the man who stood at the gate of Samaria. He saw the prophecy manifest, but he never benefited from it. And this night I cause unbelief from your heart. I cause unbelief from your heart. In Jesus mighty name we pray help us by your spirit we have come to draw we have come to rise visit us dear Spirit of God and to you be all the glory in Jesus name please be seated good evening everybody it's good to see us in church this is koinonia hallelujah for as long as you are under this grace you must become a sign and a wonder did you hear what I said? I don't care what the limitations have been. For as long as you are under this grace, I give you a guarantee by the integrity of scripture. This is my Bible. By the integrity of the word, if you will pay attention to the things you are hearing and believe that they are not cunningly devised fables and believe they are not just propositions, intellectual propositions of a man. If you believe that these are the speakings of God, then welcome to your season of surprises in the name of Jesus. Do not forget our prophetic word for the year. When God speaks, it is within his power to make what he says come to pass. The Bible called it our year of exceeding great rewards. Hallelujah. Are you ready for tonight? I want you to give everyone you can find tonight's message to listen to. Everyone, including your family. I want to show you a very deep spiritual secret this night. And then we'll pray. And like always, as always, whilst you are listening, I want you to trust the spirit of grace imparting wisdom. You see, when you see people under the anointing, shouting and all of that, don't just think deliverance. Many times it's impartation. Realities are being transported by the Spirit through his vessel into your spirit. It's a deposit. Every time your account is credited, many times your phone receives the alert. It's not your phone that was credited, but your phone becomes a witness that something has happened to your account. So whilst you are sitting, all the shaking, all the shouting and crying, it's not just about manifestations, but I'm saying when they do happen, let it be a witness to you that God is doing something to your spirit man, doing something to your destiny. And you may not know the extent of the transformation. It is until you walk out of here, you will see that you are literally becoming a sign and a wonder. Hallelujah. Tonight, I'm teaching on the topic, followers of them. I want to show you by this teaching tonight the advantage of models and patterns. 
followers of them. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12. Please give it to us. That ye be not slothful, the Bible says, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. I like this. That you do not be slothful, he says, but that you be followers of them who through faith and patience inherit or obtain the promises. Now, there are two dimensions to transformation, like I have taught you in this house. The first dimension is called the principle of followership. We are transformed in this kingdom. We evolve in this kingdom to the degree to which we are able to follow. Follow men, men that have today become models, men that have today become references. Are we together? One of the ways that we evolve in the kingdom is when God gives us the advantage of models, the advantage of references. When we look unto them, like the Bible says to look unto Abraham, we evolve and we become what we are looking at and who we are looking at. Number two, the second dimension to transformation is looking unto Jesus. It's called the law of beholding. So we behold men, but we behold Jesus. Hebrews chapter 12, 1 and 2. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed with so great a cloud of witnesses, it says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth easily beset us, and let us run with patience. Follow carefully. The race that is set before us. Read verse 2 with me, please. Ready? One, two, read. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Just stop there. Looking unto Jesus. So when you want to contend for transformation in the spirit, the formula is number one, you look unto men. Not any man, not the men you want, but certain men who have become models, patterns, and references. And then number two, ultimately, you look unto Jesus. If you look unto men alone, like you will be learning, there will be a side effect eventually. And if you look unto Jesus, as mighty as that is, he will eventually you refer you to men because that is how his system works. If you're following so far, say amen. Now, God's methods are far superior to man's methods. It's important that we get this at the back of our minds, that God has a way he does his things. And men have a way that they do their things. And that the ways of God, according to scripture, are far more superior to the ways of men, or than the ways of men. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Watch this. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Verse 9. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts your thoughts. Take note. Your thoughts, my thoughts. Your ways, my ways. And God is telling you already, that when it comes to destiny fulfillment, when it comes to living out the reality of prophecy, God's ways are far superior. God's ways of accessing finances, God's ways of doing ministry, God's ways of raising your children, God's ways of excelling in career. At any point in your life, you are given the liberty of two or more options. Your way, which for many people is the way of the devil, disguised as your way. And then God's ways. So at every point in your life and destiny, you have at least two options to choose from. As far as your becoming, your transformation, and your fulfilling destiny is concerned, the Bible tells us there is God's way or God's strategy, God's methodology, God's modus operandi, and then there is your way and any other way for that matter the way of the devil demonic ways diabolic ways secular ways 
but there is the way of the Lord. And the Bible is telling us that when we follow the way of the Lord, which is higher, greater, and better than any other path, the Bible lets us know that we can find rest as we find in Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16. Give it to us, please. Jeremiah 6 and verse 16. The word reveals that there are ancient paths that lead to rest. Stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? It says when you find it, walk therein. And it leaves you with an assurance that ye shall find rest for your souls. Hallelujah. So God's ways are higher than our ways. Please listen. You need to understand this so that you connect to what I'm about to teach you. The next thing I need you to understand is that patterns I have taught you here forerun the glory of God. Patterns forerun the glory of God. Divine patterns. Every time you want to see the glory of God revealed in your life, the Bible mandates that you walk in keeping with certain divine patterns. The glory of God does not just happen in the life of an individual. And I've taught you what the glory of God is. That the glory of God is a capture of everything that makes God God. His wisdom, his favor, his power, his goodness. The multifaceted dimensions of God being expressed in a man. I have taught you here again that your assignment as a believer is not just to fulfill God's mandate. But that your life eventually will evolve and become a manifestation of the glory of God. You believe that? In Exodus chapter 25, let's read verse 9, then we jump to 40. Exodus 25, this was Moses building the tabernacle in the wilderness. And he says, according to all that I showed thee, after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so thou shalt make it. In other words, you want to see my glory, you have to walk in keeping with certain patterns. Verse 40. And he encouraged him a second time. Look that thou make them after their pattern which was shown thee on the mount. So God gave Moses this revelation and said reproduce this pattern if you want my glory to come and to rest. This is very powerful. Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 40 and verse 16. Pay attention please everyone. The Bible says, thus did Moses according to all that the Lord commanded him. Those patterns now, so did he. Jump to verse 33, please. Jump to verse 33. He's about to finish the work according to the pattern. He reared up the court round about the tabernacle and the altar and set up the hanging of the court gate. Finally, Moses is done with the work. Watch what happens now. Verse 34. The Bible says, then, then, only after the pattern was kept, a cloud, a symbol, a manifestation of God's glory covered the tent of the congregation and the glory of God filled the tabernacle. When he kept the pattern, the glory came in honor to that pattern that had been kept. Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6, popular scripture here. Levitical chapter 9 and verse 6. And Moses said, This is the thing which the Lord commanded that ye should do. Then he says, After ye do that, the glory of the Lord shall appear unto you. So every time you see the glory of God revealed in the life of a man, financially, revealed spiritually perhaps in ministry revealed in terms of influence every manifestation of the glory of God in the life of a man is an attestation to the fact that divine patterns have been kept somewhere did you get that every time you see the glory of God revealed in the life of a man sustainably so it is proof that you have walked in keeping with God's pattern so you don't search for glory by searching for glory. You search for glory by searching to know the patterns that the glory is connected to. There is a spiritual pattern that will inevitably lead to kingdom influence. 
there is a spiritual pattern that will inevitably lead to power in the spirit. There is a spiritual pattern that will lead to leadership and excellence in life. There is a spiritual pattern, listen carefully, that will activate the prophetic within your spirit. There is a spiritual pattern that turns you into a warrior in the spirit. There is a spiritual pattern that makes you marvelously favored, even prosperous of the Lord. There is a spiritual pattern that controls longevity. There is a spiritual pattern that controls church growth and increase. It does not just happen. There is a spiritual pattern that makes for excellence within the secular system. Your assignment under God is that by the ministry of the teaching priest like you have received and you are receiving now to understand these divine patterns. Watch this. And submit yourself to engage them. I give you a guarantee by the integrity of God's word. When you understand these patterns and engage them, all that will be left in your life is the glory of God. So when you find people rise from their lowly estates in life and destiny, whether in ministry, in career, in family, in destiny, in whatever endeavor, it is because they have accessed certain divine patterns and engaged them with understanding. What suddenly turns a man of God who perhaps was a weak, ordinary person to now become a voice that you can hear? Patterns. Patterns. Are we learning now? What turns someone who once was maybe poor, limited, not able to meet his needs and that of the family, and then fast forward a few years, and that person is being a blessing to the kingdom, living a life of dignity and honor. What is the difference? What sponsored that transition? Adherence to patterns. The same way the violation of patterns can deplete men from grace to grass. Did you hear that? From grace to grass, our world sadly is full of people who were once anointed, once influential, once wealthy, once powerful. For as long as you walk in keeping with divine patterns, I give you a guarantee by the integrity of God's word, there will not be decline in your life. It is true. God would not create a system that is so unpredictable. Your faith has to be anchored on something sure and steadfast. Are we together? We build products today and we give people guarantees that provided you are with this product, if this product is corrupted within this time, return it to our company. These are men as frail as we are because we believe that sustainability of any product brings credit and merit to the organization that builds that product. So we take responsibility when products fail, especially if it's not the making of the final consumer. A product, we have called, recalled cars, thousands of cars across the globe, recalled them, not minding the burden of shipping it back to their original place because people were conscious of their reputation and they wanted to correct something that was a mass defect. If it is God that built this system, there has to be a level of stability within the system so that your faith is anchored on something sure and steadfast. It is by this truth that I dare to tell you that we are not teaching you cunningly devised fables. These are not even teachings that are my own invention or our own invention. We are too young to invent something that runs the lives and the destinies of men. These are time-tested mysteries. Mysteries that were handed over to us by many who today have joined the cloud of witnesses. And that if you can listen and understand these patterns, regardless what is happening in the world, for you, your testimony is that your life will continually become a manifestation of God's glory. You believe that? Shout a loud Amen. amen. So I said that God's methods are far above our methods and that there are divine patterns that connect to glory. Now listen carefully. Followership is one of the mysteries of the kingdom by which men become mighty. Followership is one of the mysteries of the kingdom 
by which men become mighty. Let me take it again. Followership is one of the mysteries of the kingdom by which men, ordinary men, weak men, limited men become mighty. Every time you find a man of stature and strength in life and destiny, especially in the spirit, among the many patterns that were kept has been the law of followership. Matthew 4, 19. Matthew 4, 19. Jesus said unto them, follow me. Who is speaking to them now? Who is he speaking to? Weak men, ordinary men, not necessarily failures. Some of them were businessmen. They had some results. But with respect to eternal things, with respect to the kingdom and God's program, many of them were largely weak and limited people. And then he brings them together and says, follow me. Hallelujah. He says, and I will make you. I like this part. Follow me. You are made among other factors by who you choose to follow. Did you hear that? You are made in life and destiny by who you choose to follow. Follow me and I will make you, in this case, fishers of men. But he can make you anything that is befitting for your destiny. Now, Acts chapter 4 and verse 13. Just to establish the fact that followership is a mystery in the kingdom by which men become mighty. So, in Matthew chapter 4, he meets weak people and tells them, follow me and I will make you. By the time we get to Acts chapter 4, please, give it to us, verse 13. The Bible says, now, when they saw the boldness of Peter, contextually speaking, this was when the man at gate beautiful. Remember? When the man was healed and then the council summoned Peter and he was making defense as to where he got the power to raise that man from the ground. Now, when they... They saw the boldness of Peter and John. They perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. I hope you know that these were men that those guys knew. They knew their yesterday. They knew how weak and limited they were. The Bible says they marveled. The men had changed. They were no longer the timid fishermen, confused, disoriented about life. The Bible says, and they took knowledge of them. This was the secret that they had been with Jesus. Did you see that? They took knowledge that the reason why these men transited from fishermen to apostles, weak men, confused men, to mighty warriors for the kingdom is because they had been with Jesus. Followership in truth is one of the mysteries of the kingdom by which we become mighty write this down please human models human models and i'll define for you shortly what a model is human models inspire hunger and passion in the hearts of those who follow them human models inspire hunger and they inspire passion in the hearts of those who follow them human models Everywhere you find models, whether in sports, you find models in ministry, you find models in business. Among the many things that the models do is that they inspire, number one, hunger. They inspire passion in them that follow them. We have all kinds of names to call models in our world. We call them for some influencers. We call them references. We call them whatever name we find. But write this down. A model is an example. A model is an example. A model is a prototype. A model is a template. A model is a reference. Let me take it again. A model is an example. When you call men or call things models, it means there are examples. A model is a prototype. A model is a template. A model is a reference. And may I add one more description? Models in many regards are foundations. Because every other thing that is built is built after the pattern of the model. Models are examples, they are prototypes, they are templates, they are references, and they can be foundations. This is very powerful. 
Now write this down. Transformation and replication. Two words you may want to underline. Transformation and replication is very easy when there are models and references. Transformation and replication. Are we together? Now, um, it's been a long time since I had an example. Let me have four gentlemen from the worship team come. Four gentlemen. Come. Now, all of you watch this. These are four fine gentlemen from the worship team. I want to show you the power of models. Are we together? Now, watch this. Sam, you are going to lead. All of you will follow him. You can lead anywhere you want to go and they follow. Are we together? Yes. Now, go ahead. Anywhere at all. Watch this. Their job is to follow. Whose job is the hardest here? The one leading. Are you seeing that? The remaining need to follow. And they are following. He's just walking now. You try it again. Go ahead. They are following. The hardest job here is the job of the one at the first position. You see that now? Because wherever he leads, now imagine that, keep, keep moving. Imagine where he's taking them to. Did you see that? So what do you think will happen in the next few seconds? <laughs> Who sinned that they failed? They simply followed, but they followed wrongly. Are we together? Now, gentlemen, stand here, all four of you. Every one of you, you are at liberty to guess your way around life. Are you ready? Walk anywhere you want to go, hoping you are at the right place. Go. Anywhere. Watch this. These guys all want to make it. Some want to make money. Others want ministry to work. I want you to watch and learn. Continue. Look at this. Sam is on his way this way. David is on his way. This gentleman, this guy is angry. I'm five years in ministry. This thing is not working. I'm showing you the life of some of you right now. Now watch this. Some of them are believers. Look how smart, handsome, and well-dressed they are. You would think their destiny will respect their looks, their clothes. As healthy as they are. This is 2017. Now 2018. Now 2019. Now 2020. Some of them are even praying while they are doing this. God, why is my life like this? I am moving in circles. I've been in Abuja since before some of these little children, you call it, were born. And now they are the ones who are my employees. Watch this. I got first class in school. I agree and I respect you. This is a mistake of many of you. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Now stop where you are. Which of them is worthy of your following? If I ask you, choose one to follow. Do you know why you are afraid? There is no organization to their path. Any one of them can be a failure. How am I sure that walking with David will not be a risk? Look where he's standing. This my man is already even standing close to this place. Now, Sam, come. Two of you walk together. You follow him. And then the remaining keep doing what you are doing. I want you to learn. Watch this. Which pattern looks more worthy of your followership? Are you seeing that there is some organization here going on? You see that now? Because we are working based on the assumption that this man knows where he's going. We hope we are right and this one is following. This one looks like he's now joining them. He's tired of moving his way. He's already coming close. Thank you guys. Watch this. Let me tell you this. I want you to listen very carefully. Transformation and replication is only as hard as the distance between you and a model. For as long as you do not have worthy models or references, becoming is very difficult and very hard. Now watch this. 
Psalm is a worshiper. Come. It is easier in the presence of this man for this man to become a worshiper. Am I right on that? The reason is because based on our assumption that he's ahead of him in terms of grace, experience, influence, and access. Now, this man can leverage on that provision and become easily. Am I right on that? Yes. Come, come, Dave. So if this guy is a businessman, say a multi-millionaire, not a thief, not a crook. You mean it? Am I prophesying? This is my people like money. Make sure you love Jesus above money. Say amen. amen. Okay, so since we've started, let's continue. So this man, remember what is happening in the economy. This guy has distinguished himself. Now here comes Dave, wanting to also be blessed financially. And he's sincerely going around in circles. Are you seeing that now? And he's wondering, is it that this thing cannot work? When God wants to help such a man, God reduces the distance between you and a model. You see, one of the ways God answers prayer is by introducing men to your life. Every time you are praying, keep looking out. Who is coming as an answer to this prayer? One last time, Sam, you take the lead again. All of you follow him. This is the intent of the teaching tonight. To bring organization and excellence to your life. To compress time. To show you that everything you see in prophecy, you can become. Not by guessing your way. There is an ancient path already. The path to the anointing. The path to glory. The path to power. The path to increase. Guessing your way around is number one, pride. Number two, programming difficulty and pain. There is nothing that is new under the sun. Not making money, not doing ministry, not raising children. There are people who have excelled commendably in every area. Lay your hands on your head in one minute and say, Lord, I am tired of going round in circles. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I'm tired of going round in circles. Is a man of God praying. You're about to hear something that would change your life. Now I know there is a way. There is an easier way my family can rise. There is a way the anointing can come. I've been searching for the healing anointing genuinely. Pray in one minute. That will show me the path of life. It is in your light that we see light. praying few more seconds Hallelujah. Amen. So, transformation and replication. 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 What does it mean to replicate? To reproduce results in men. Are we together? One of the ways you must produce products is to first have a simulation of the model. Am I right on that? When you simulate the model and it meets your quality control standards, you mark all the parameters that were used to produce that initial model. That becomes a pattern. And notice the making of the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth becomes faster and easier because you are not guessing. 
research and development units in many organizations are saddled with the responsibility of testing and trying many models until they come up with a model that they perceive to be acceptable per time. Am I right on that? They now define the parameters that produce that model and then they must produce their results. That's how they make cars. So the car in Abuja looks the same. If it's the same model as the car, whatever. You even use the consciousness of models and their quality to identify cars, identify things. You know the difference between a Mercedes-Benz from a Toyota, from a BMW. You know the difference between this device and versus that one because of models. Replication and transformation is easy when people understand the power of followership. Now, let me say a few things before we discuss some principles here. I want to talk about pioneering moves or pioneering anything. I've studied a bit about pioneering. To pioneer means to start. To pioneer means the journey that makes you the model yourself. And let me submit to you that pioneering anything any move, any dimension is very challenging. Why is it challenging? Because largely you may not have references or enough references. Hallelujah. There are people who are called authorities in certain fields of the academia. And the reason why they are called authorities is because they are given the credit and the honor of pioneering certain fields. Maybe genetics. Are we together? Yes. Maybe, you know, whatever complicated field. And so if they are able to arrive at something for as long as they are, uh, they are alive, anybody who is building anything with respect to their field must acknowledge them and consult with them. They have become authorities in that field. Pioneering any move of God, any spiritual activity is very difficult. Let me tell you this. One of the reasons why you see that we honor fathers is because we give them the eternal honor for pioneering certain things. There have been many moves of God that were pioneered dimensions that were imported to the earth. And the first set, the first fruit of those who received that dimension, they survived things that very few people could survive. You read it from the Bible, you read it through history. Are we together now? Yes. When Paul was sent to the Gentiles, no one had seen that kind of thing because salvation was to the Jews. Now Paul was reintroducing an aspect of the gospel that became a subject of debate for a long time. It brought trouble between Paul and Peter. Peter said, no, listen, this gospel, the Gentiles are uncircumcised people. They are not supposed to be part of this covenant. And now Paul is saying, no, I've encountered Jesus. And I've read from prophecy that the same Lord is rich unto all. That salvation is first of the Jews. Now what Peter was saying was that the Gentiles have to become Jews by circumcision. Then when they are now circumcised, they can now receive the experience. And Paul is saying, no, this is a new order. They do not need physical circumcision again. That they are spiritual Jews because they have believed in Christ who was rooted in Abraham. And Peter said, no, I don't agree with this. Pioneering is very hard because for many years you will walk alone. There are people who introduce certain products from an economic standpoint in Nigeria and for many years they walked alone. There are many people who introduce certain things by the Spirit. Are we together now? All through church history, Anywhere you see a pioneer of a ministry, a pioneer of a business, a pioneer of a, a dimension in the spirit, they are deserving of your honor forever. In Nigeria here, for instance, we never knew and we never believed that God could raise men to build cities, men to become like cities. But once upon a time, many years ago, those we call fathers today as young men, they went largely to places like Tulsa, Oklahoma, and they saw what God was doing through men like Kenneth E. Hagin and all those who had gone before him. 
they return back with an anointing and an inspiration and one by one you would hear that they went to bushes and began to buy kilometers like madmen with no guarantee and they turned those bushes like I said last week to cities it was a pioneering grace how about those who started 24 hour prayers there was no guarantee that that would happen and there are campgrounds today where people literally pray 24 hours there are many things that we never knew that the church and believers could come into and then God sampled a few people now the law is found in Isaiah 9 and verse 8 give it to us please Isaiah 9 and verse 8 the Lord sent a word into not to Jacob into Jacob he sent a word a dimension into Jacob and it lighted upon Israel every time God wants to introduce a new dimension to men he will find a man say a man and he will place an unction upon that man and enter a covenant with that man that man will now model that possibility to the body of Christ when he models that possibility then as many who believe that this is a reality now begin to come into those experiences hallelujah we never knew that there was a creative dimension for instance to the prophetic most people's idea about the prophetic is prophesying by revealing information but many of our fathers came and they brought a dimension a creative dimension they may not tell you your name and tell you all of that but men like Baba Debe will say there's someone here in the name of Jesus by tomorrow this will happen and you hear people shouting amen like madmen and sometimes they live from that church service into their testimonies that was where we learned that the creative power the prophetic word is not only revelatory in nature it is also creative today we have stood upon those models and it has helped us to do ministry effectively are we together that beyond revealing details which is profitable of course we can speak over people that in the name of Jesus may God open a door and our faith is anchored on Jesus but anchored on the possibility that has been modeled to us by those who have gone ahead of us if you understand me shout amen, amen. hallelujah or a robot in modern history I believe is one of the persons who showed the dignity of kingdom wealth and prosperity that it can happen to a man who was called by God until then people never believed that if you answer the call you can live a life of dignity are we together now there are exaggerated dimensions to prosperity I will always observe but I'm talking about prosperity with a purpose from a kingdom standpoint it was Ora Roberts who believed God and brought I think the generation of the last say 60 70 years into the consciousness that God can bless men void of manipulation God can bless men regardless whatever it is they are doing and he built today the Ora Roberts University when you get to that campus you will see a praying hand as a symbol that God answers prayer as a testament of faith when he set that model many people began to believe God and you see the replication became faster today by the grace of God down through history among the many things we have received when we are believing God for things we also believe him for the blessing you're sitting here today your comfort while you are listening void of pressure and void of manipulation is because of someone's sacrifice they showed us what God could do and we released our faith towards that direction hallelujah Billy Graham among many he was one man who showed us that on account of the gospel you can fill a stadium you can gather a crowd of people not just for self-marketing but that there is an unction that can come upon a man that even with the simplicity of your speech you can gather a whole nation Billy Graham preached in North Korea can you imagine every president he rose to a point of influence and there are great men and you know that includes even fathers in our nation who saw that as a possibility 
It was David Yongichu of blessed memory who surprised the whole world in modern history. He developed a model with God and encountered an anointing that granted him grace to build an auditorium where people would come all around to worship 750,000 people per week. Are we together? Young Gichu of blessed memory. When he did that, our father and the Lord, Baba Deboe, went and met him. Watch this. They went there to see it. I'm saying this because he said it by himself. That when he went and stood there, that was the first time he had a man of God begging members not to come to the next Sunday so that others will have space. Have you ever seen that happen? That you beg and say, please, help those who have not come. Let them also enjoy the presence of God. So if you come this week now till miracle service, don't come again. And our father in the Lord said, he saw this and he said, my God, so God can move like this in a man. He returned back and today the RCCG is a global testimony of what God can do. I've been there many times. I've had the honor and the privilege of preaching alongside our father in the Lord. And I have seen this with shock and wonder. When they are buying lands, they don't measure like the way you measure in a tape. You just keep moving wherever it stops. Today we can believe God for great things. Like we say in Nigeria, who dash monkey banana for some of us to be trusting God for big visions and big dreams for the kingdom. We saw others who went ahead of us that God could honor a man beyond your local place where you are domiciled at. I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus Christ. In this season, everything you have seen God do through men that is needed for your destiny, may you come into that experience. Amen. Hallelujah. Young Gicho has gone to be with the Lord today. For those who never had the privilege to see him, a father in the Lord that the Jew is still alive and strong. And today, he has become a model. Every time I have the honor of going to the campground, I just look at that place and I'm like, my God, what did you tell this man? Three kilometer by three kilometer. That is one auditorium. That is one space. That's not the only space. Three kilometer by three kilometer. Hallelujah. I've been to the redeemed campground in Dallas. Amazing. Massive estate. As if it's not America. This is God for you. Can I tell you? By this revelation tonight, may your faith be enlarged. Yes. Shout a loud amen. May your faith be enlarged. Yes. God's servant Bishop Oyedeko started right from Kaduna. Right from that lowly. There are people today who are in ministry who were there when he was starting. And today God has lifted him. And given the ministry is spread across the globe. There is nothing you cannot do. There's no mountain you cannot move. If you have said it, then you will do it. You have a track record of keeping your word. You're not about <laughs> I remember in our small way when we started our little crusade our whole ushers you divide our ushering team by three or four that was the number of those who came for the crusade today and we fasted we prayed we trained ourselves but we were not discouraged. You know why? Because there were models before us. So it gave us hope that even though we're just starting, that even though our beginning were small, that our latter end will increase. <laughs> Hallelujah. Many of us would have been discouraged in the journey until we had the testimony of models. And they told us they went through worse conditions in ministry and it planted hope. You know why sometimes people tell their stories? not just to brag they tell their stories sometimes to motivate someone to let you know that if God did it yesterday 
he will do it today. You're not the first person to beg for food as a man of God. You're not the first person to go to bed hungry. There are men who were in that lowly estate and yet the God of heaven exalted them. Hallelujah. So I was generally saying to pioneer any move is very difficult. Now, I must tell you this. There are two limitations that if you are a pioneer of anything, you have to be aware of. If you are not careful, you will fall prey to these two limitations. Number one, pioneering requires humility to keep growing and not to fight improvements when you see it. The danger of pioneering is that because most pioneers are emotionally connected to their pain, they are emotionally connected to the lonely nights, the sacrifices that have gone into doing what they are doing. Anytime they see an improvement on what they have done, they will most likely frown at it. It is the weakness that comes with pioneering. Hallelujah. This is true. If you have ever pioneered anything in any degree in your life, you will know the bias. How many of you have seen parents buy their first car? Remember, the first car that they will never sell. Your dad is a billionaire and yet that first car is somewhere in the garage. Sir, why won't you sell this car? And he will tell you, you let me, this car reminds me that God is faithful. And when the car is scattered and gone, he will keep one tire, he will keep one gearbox, and you, are you worshipping it? And he says, you will not understand. I used to wonder many years ago why a lot of elderly people seem to be emotionally connected to things that didn't make sense to young people. They will keep certain monuments. They will keep certain gifts. You will see a man holding a very squeezed book, holding one squeezed letter, and he will not let it go. And you say, this letter, I got this letter in 1941. This was the first award I received. And the person he's talking to is sleeping. Because it makes no sense to you. So it is not unusual that when you pioneer things and they work at any level, you become emotionally connected to your results such that it becomes difficult to embrace improvement. Imagine that the Wright brothers came back to life and they saw what looked like the initial stages of their invention. They would run away from their own invention. Today we have supersonic aircraft. I mean that can move kilometers within minutes. I'm not sure they saw that far when they started. How about those who started vehicles? You see, let me tell you this. Models must be secured enough to allow improvement without feeling like failures. It is one thing models need to understand. One of the reasons I tell you with all due respect why the body of Christ has not evolved is because the emotional connect of models to the dealings that they had with God may not easily allow them to embrace other dimensions of God because they are emotionally connected to the things that have produced their result today. But God is always in motion. Did you hear what I said? Technology is a lesson to us that any model that you see is not yet the best of its version. Phones, cars, every year there is improvement on the models. It is because of the flexibility of science to allow creativity find its cause that today we have all kinds of things. If those who initially brought for us technology if they sat on what they did and said there cannot be improvement listen the model of healing that we know is the one we saw from scripture and the one that has been demonstrated to us but i i tell you before christ returns you will see other models of healing where people will stand from one position and literally speak to nations who would have known that the sun can stand still over a territory but one person did it and just because it's not been done again does not mean it will not be done. If the need arises, the same God can make it happen. If making the sun stand still is a strategy for massive salvation, you can trust that the Lord of the harvest will place grace on someone 
But the question is when it happens, will you have the heart to believe? See, the current move of God always, almost always fights the next move of God. It is a limitation, the second limitation with models. The current move of God always, almost always seems to fight the next move of God. If I have seen God move this way, if I have seen God lift men this way, if I have seen God prosper men this way, chances are excellent that when I see God move again in a way that is foreign to my experience, immediately I flag it off and I say, no, God cannot prosper this way. Now look up, let me give you an example. I will never advocate carelessness, laziness, get rich quick and so on and so forth. The model for wealth as we know in our world is diligence, the Lord blessing the works of your hands and you grow gradually. If you build a house after 20 years, 30 years, men will clap for you and say that's right, that's how life works. But in the economy of God, there are other possibilities that only few people have revealed. For instance, by this time tomorrow. Now what if that happens to someone? You have defied all the economic laws you know. That is not throwing away the laws. It is building on that foundation that God can also go this far. How about a fish producing coin? How about manna falling from heaven? What other dimension is there to God that we have not seen? What other dimension is there to the kingdom? What other dimension is there to evangelism that we have not seen? Imagine that for instance, just an example, a man now steps into a dimension of intercession where you pray in a certain way and the Spirit of God can literally make a multitude of people to have dreams of the cross in one night. That can be a dimension. And you find multitudes saved by the next day. Everybody saying, I had the same kind of dream. And thousands of people get born again by themselves in one day. Could it be that that is a dimension that is reserved for the end time? Models are important. But the challenge with models, number one, I repeat, is that because they are emotionally connected to their current results and their experiences, chances are excellent that sometimes they can feel insecure and they can feel like failures if any improvement is added on their initial experience are we together yes let me tell you the truth when i started ministry i didn't see this kind of manifestations that you see now i know there are times you are teaching and then when you start ministering you see that maybe a special healing program and people are shouting jumping up and down but we did not see it in this manner i had to study scripture myself to say i hope that this thing is of god how do you talk and every day people are shouting from start to finish if it's a miracle service people will understand but even when you are joking somebody is still shouting so i needed to go to scripture and say god what is wrong am i all right It was William Branham who would stand on a crusade ground and not minister for a long time and he would say he's waiting for the angel that signifies his revelation. He would stand walking for a long time and later on he would just smile and say he has come and begin to prophesy. Now, I'm not saying you use that model but I'm saying these are possibilities that have been shown in scripture, have been shown in the lives of men. It would be stupid for any man to go to a river in Abuja and sit down and say, fish, come quickly, bring my house rent. No. But it would be totally, it would be totally unbelief on your own part to shut that possibility from God. If it happened once, it, a portal has been opened again. It will not close. It will only be administered when it is needed. You see that now. Every possibility that is open in the spirit creates a portal in the earth where it can happen again and again. Sometimes they are reserved because the saints are not matured enough to walk in that dimension. 
God seeing that it can lead to another kind of error that will end up destroying the body of Christ. Now, most people who are new in the faith may not understand a strange experience that we used to have many years ago. It was the experience of oil and gold dust. There used to be these experiences. When we started ministry, many people would have these experiences. Oil coming out of their hands. I had videos where oil was dropping from a cross in a church. Not manipulation. You will see it from the video. Jars of oil. You will see feet of angels. Laced with gold dust. Silver dust. As we saw this thing, there was a breakout of it that time in Zaria. Many believers started coming into it. You know what? It now started leading to error. Because many people will go to pray and be looking around their body. They wanted gold dust and God withdrew that sign till today. So there are many things that God will not allow. Not because he cannot do it. He is more interested in the growth of believers. I have cried myself. Many of us who are, have been quite old in this ministry know. I have cried myself and what came out is oil, not tears. Sometimes we don't share these testimonies because we do not want to create a negative pattern. Someone will go now and say, wow, so oil is proof of anointing. And start praying and say, if your oil is not coming out of your hand, you don't know God. Another movement will start credited to your model. Are you seeing that now? It is the reason why we hide our experiences like I taught you behind the cross and we insist that only that which is consistent is, is consistent with scripture is known and revealed to people but let me tell you there are many many experiences there are some things I will tell you about my life and my experience with God some of you will not even believe it so we shelve it and give glory to God and that which is profitable to the church is what we communicate many of us here I believe are going to be models to a generation you must beware. Hear me. Models are foundations. You must be secured enough for improvements to be made on what you have laid and yet not feel like a failure. How many of you have seen the foundation of a house? Do you paint it? The foundation of the house is about the ugliest part of that building. It's even so down that you don't see it. Yet that is what holds the building. Hallelujah. All of the aesthetics in this beautiful auditorium is courtesy, the strength of the foundation that is laid. So there are people who have modeled certain dimensions of God. But right now God is bringing other word-based, scripture-consistent dimensions. It's like seals that have been closed for the end time and now they are being opened. We are seeing God move in ways that we never imagined again. That he would move we are seeing God do things now are we together now that may be foreign to the experience of people but is consistent in Scripture I'm saying this that when you become a model even if you are Samuel or Eli be careful when God begins to speak to Samuel in a way you do not understand don't call it an attack and don't call it error among the many failures of Eli one thing he did right was to discern that even though his eyes were dim, he had seen that a new move is rising called Samuel. And he was secured enough to say, if God speaks to you, maybe if I were Eli and I hear that God is calling Samuel, maybe some of us would have killed Samuel and say, you would die here now. Isn't that true? Maybe some of us would have said, if God ever speaks to you, Samuel is a demon spirit. But Eli told him, if he says this, Say, speak for your servant heareth. And that became the journey that made Samuel a mighty prophet who ordained the kings in Israel whose word did not fall to the ground. Many of us are inevitably going to be better than our parents financially, spiritually, ministerially. But let me give you a word of caution. Never fight foundations because of the beauty of the superstructure. Did you hear what I said? Today, when we say the inventors of vehicles, with all due respect, we don't call Toyota, we don't call Mercedes-Benz, we don't call all of these cars, even though they have produced cars at a level we never imagined, the credit still goes to those who founded it. 
If I ask you who is the founder of electricity today, as much as we know and history has told us, you would not mention the guy working in the power holding company in Nigeria. You would not even walk, mention the one who started solar panels. No, the credit still goes to the foundation. This again becomes a caution for the generation rising. We must never look down on fathers and those who have become models because we may have seen certain areas. No. A foundation is why a building stands. A building can crash down and you can rebuild it if the foundation is right. The Bible says if the foundation be destroyed. Remember my teaching last week? I told us that the stature of a man in the spirit is beyond the quality of his rema for want of word. If you depend on just the quality of our speakings to measure spirituality, you will make a mistake. You would have said Billy Graham. Billy Graham did not perform many known miracles as we see. In fact, I didn't find any quite frankly in his videos. Of course, I believe there will be others. However, will I ever stand and try to match my stature with Billy Graham today? No. Even a blind man who is not born again knows that there is an east and west difference. Hopefully we will rise in our lifetime, but we are still on the journey and we must recognize it. There's Billy Graham's message online. There's my message online. Many of you listen to my message. But that does not mean I'm greater than Billy Graham. No. Again, our arrogant world will soon believe that we are better. No. We will be an improvement. But you see, that foundation that was laid is what has helped us to be able to build today. It is the reason why, among other things, we can go to Manchester, we can go to UK, we can go to America, we can go to Canada, because someone challenged our faith that on account of the gospel, God can pick you from your lowly estate and you can speak his purposes to the nations regardless the color of your skin and that the same Lord is rich unto all. You understand me so far? Shout amen. amen. Can I tell you, I'm saying this to you because you will be a pioneer one day as a father, as a mother, as a leader starting your business, as a man of God. Let me tell you the truth. If as a pioneer, you are the best version of yourself at the end of your life, you failed. If as a pioneer, at the point where you are ending your journey, you are still the best version, you have failed. The excellency of your being a pioneer is that you raise people who become an improvement. By the time Koinonia is 30 years, if Christ tarries, 40 years, if Christ tarries, you see, I may be, for want of word, the most respected man of God in that ministry. But I expect that sons and daughters should have risen from this ministry, carrying fire, carrying grace. Their success and their greatness is what proves that we did well. Is someone learning? So pioneering requires humility to keep growing yourself and not to fight improvements. And the caution here is that the last move of God almost always fights the next move of God. Now listen carefully. Let me share with you a few principles and then I speak over your life. Remember what we are talking about? Followers of them. The advantage of having models and having patterns. Number one, this call is to models first and then I'll talk about followers. All models, those who are privileged to be in a position where they spearhead anything spiritual, anything technological, anything economic, they must remain students themselves and never have an arrival mentality. Any model who wants to remain a model, listen carefully, must remain a student himself. I have great respect for people who have results and whose hearts are open to learn. 
I always pray for myself that God will do something in my life. Listen, that God will place an unction upon my destiny that keeps me ever humble, even as he lifts me. That the privilege God has given to do the things that we do, that we never become stumbling blocks for others to rise. Are we together? But that while we are doing this, we remain students ourselves. The way models remain models is that they also remain students while they model. Hallelujah. Are we learning? All models must remain students themselves and never have an arrival mentality. This is a rule of thumb. I have seen the anointing in my life, but I'm still a student in the school of the spirit and I will learn. I will learn. As God is helping us build others, we are also learning from those who have gone ahead of us. Provided you remain a student in the school of the spirit, there is no limit to the height that you will rise. Let me speak over someone. In the name of Jesus, God is beginning to use you to raise others. I'm praying that every pride that wants to eat you up and peg your growth, let that pride die this night. Hallelujah. There's what we call undergraduate. There's what we call postgraduate. How many of you know that there are many times in college, in the university, where the lecturers are also students? Is that true? They are employed as lecturers within the university system, and yet they are postgraduate students themselves. They are doing their PhD or doing some other things around the system, and yet they are lecturers. They will come and teach with authority and yet they are lecturers. That is how to remain an effective model. You must know that God has granted you grace, whether as an overseer over a ministry, as a man of God, a captain of industry, that even though I am leading the field in my area, wherever God has placed me, I must remain a student. Now, let me tell you the truth. Most of the places today, by the grace of God that I go to, most times I go to be the one to minister. Now, that is a side effect. We get used sometimes to this celebrity life. When you go and you sit down somewhere, ah, you mean apostle is here? Please bring him to the front. Can you say one or two things? Just say God bless you. And sometimes that sincere honor stops models from becoming and remaining students. You get used to being celebrated that you now become embarrassed to learn. You are so used to being celebrated that the moment you have to sit down and learn, you interpret it as failure. Why should I learn? Especially from someone I raised. Why should I learn? No, I know it. There are heights. Let me repeat myself. There are heights we have not gotten to. There are levels in the spirit we have not gotten to. And there are others who have gone there. And while we keep inspiring a generation to love Jesus and to become, we must remain students too. Never be embarrassed as a model if you find yourself in a class in the school of the spirit. Learn with honor. Sit down and learn. Take notes. I wish I could show you my notes. You will be surprised. You would think I were not saved. Because I absorb, I learn whatever I have to learn. My commitment for growth my passion for growth for my sake and your sake is greater than my ego. My ego will die a thousand times for me to learn and grow. I will ask questions where I need to. If I need to ask a child a question and say, young boy, you are my son, but how can I get this done? If he has the answer, I tell you sincerely, I will sit down and I will learn. If you are too big to sit down, you will not eat bread. Jesus said, tell the people to sit down before they serve bread. Those who want to collect the bread standing will die hungry while they are standing. You must humble yourself to sit down before the bread is served. Great warriors in prayer, millionaires, you are a millionaire. Congratulations. But is that money you have, is it enough? Can you give to the kingdom and still sleep? If not, there is still something to learn. Congratulations for what you have done. As a man of God, thank God for you, the spirit of revelation. Thank God for teaching. Thank God for the influence. But is that all your life is about? Could there be that there is something more to learn? Now, very quickly, let me talk 
about profitable followership. I need to teach you this. I've spoken enough about models. The teaching tonight centers on followers. Now your eyes will be open. I'm praying that you will see what I want to show you in the name of Jesus. There are demands to follow profitably. When you want to follow them who God has set as models, there are demands. And if you do not understand the demands, you can be around models and never receive from them. This is a tragedy of many people who are in proximity with the anointing, in proximity with greatness, in proximity with favor, in proximity with grace, and they never rise. They remain stunted. The Gehazi syndrome, the Judas syndrome, close to power, close to grace, and yet they are never beneficiaries of it. Or recipients of it. Watch this. Number one, profitable followership demands genuine connection and loyalty. Write it down. Profitable followership demands genuine connection and loyalty. Never follow a man you cannot be genuinely connected to in the spirit. Never follow a man or a system or a structure that you will not be truly loyal to. You will be doing yourself a disservice. There are many people who have pieces of them everywhere. You see that now? Pieces of themselves everywhere. They are not genuinely connected to anything and anyone and they don't care. They will never credit anybody as touching contributions to their life. It's an embarrassment. No. It's, a, it's an error that a generation is making. Profitable followership demands genuine connection. Connection from your heart that these individuals, these systems, these structures have modeled a dimension of God commendable enough to command your admiration, to command your connection, to command your loyalty. Let me tell you the truth. You will never, and I say this under God, you will never hear me, whether in the open or the secret, insult, abuse, and be sarcastic over the fathers of faith. It doesn't matter what happens. It is, it is an eternal covenant I have with myself that I will honor them in life and I will honor them to their graves. It doesn't matter what I see. It doesn't matter what I don't see. I owe them by reason of the model. They have helped me understand scripture. They brought perspective. They have believed. They have spoken over some of us. Even when we did not see the kind of future that God is bringing now, they are deserving of our honor eternally. This is the reason why every opportunity God grants grace to listen to or be with them, something is deposited. And yet, with all due respect, there are people who have unrestrained proximity to anointings, unrestrained proximity to blessings, and you see their lives. Those kind of people live their lives in pain and offense. They answer yes sir, in the open, and they go back and say, forget this man, forget this boss, forget this person. Oh, yes, sir. Sean, sir. Well done, sir. Uh, you are the man of God. You are my CEO, my prophet, my apostle, my whatever. All that is just blind hypocrisy. And they wonder why even when they kneel down and you lay hands, put oil on top again, place handkerchief on their head or whatever, nothing happens. Because there is a cloud of dishonor and pretense and nothing ever drops from there. Hallelujah. Dr. Miles Munro has gone to be with the Lord many years now. I honor him. One time I met someone who, who knew him and came from the church there. I appreciated and celebrated the person. I said, thank you very much. Dr. Miles is long gone. There is nowhere I see his books that can bless me that I do not have. I doubt, except maybe there are other materials that I'm not aware of. I doubt if there are a number of his books that I don't have. You draw by honor. You draw by genuine connection. Some of us have been close to multi-millionaires. 
If only you understood followership genuinely, by now you will not be in this state. Beware when God gives you the privilege of access to greatness. Let me encourage you. Beware of familiarity. Beware of dishonor. Are we together? Do you know the closer you are to the anointing, the harder your chances of receiving because of familiarity? I, 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 I. Glory be to God. Hi, 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 Glory be to God. Hi, 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Profitable followership happens by genuine connection. The hypocrisy of this generation is the reason why people never receive. There is nobody that is deserving of your honor. There is nobody sacrifice that matters to you. Remember I taught you that there are two kinds of price. The price he paid and the price that men pay. Both deserve to be respected. Our generation has mastered the art of trivializing the sacrifices of people. You hear that a young boy, as a student, he sponsored himself while sponsoring three others. And today he has become a businessman. Yes, what is there? He's just lucky. God just help everyone. No. Every time you despise what God is doing in the life of a man, you have closed the door to yourself entering that possibility. It is true. Many of us insult rich people. Everybody who is wealthy is a crook. Everybody who is wealthy is a thief. Everybody who is a wealthy is a, No, no. And yet you want it. You are praying for it. Everybody who is anointed is a witch or a wizard. Everybody who is anointed is, must have gotten power. No. You act like that, you will never step into certain dimensions of wisdom and grace. If you can see me as I'm taking, Elijah told Elijah. Hallelujah. I saw the grace for influence that God placed upon Dr. Miles Munro. You've heard the story. A man who was a man of God, then his church was the largest in the Bahamas. I don't know about now. This guy had access and influence to governments. I said, what kind of grace is this? Lord, I covet this grace sincerely, not just for myself. It is needed as part of the apostolic equipping. And the grace landed and every devil can know that this grace has landed. For many of us, as you are listening, you need to repent because you have a great ministry. You have criticized every man of God. You have criticized every businessman. You have criticized every politician. You have even criticized God. Profitable followership that releases grace upon your life is such that happens through divine connection and loyalty. Number two, what is the second principle? Of profitable connection watch this now followership only becomes profitable when the learner or the follower remains a student Luke 640 followership becomes profitable only when the learner or the follower remains a student When you are following for your making and you have a colleague mentality, when you are following for your making and you have a mentality that makes you believe that, oh, I'm a boss in all, you will never receive anything. It is true. The disciple, watch this, is not above his master, but everyone that is matured shall be as his master. The goal when you follow is that God helps you to rise to that position and then when you become as his master, you can become greater in result but that person remains a foundation. It's a powerful revelation. There are many, many, many people, ladies and gentlemen, who are not willing to be students. They crave to come in the presence of great people 
But let me give you an advice. Every time you meet great people, don't be obsessed with taking photos. Be obsessed with receiving graces. There are people who will barge into the life of strangers. They don't know them. You've never seen them. And the next thing, they're picking their phones, wanting to take selfie, so that they gather all of them and say, look, I've met everybody. Papa Adeboye, look at it. Bishop Oedebo, this is it. Papa Kumuyi, this is it. What from their life should you have to show a photo as proof that you met God through them? No. There should be a deposit. It should be an embarrassment to your destiny that you came so close to those graces and all you were thinking about was social media, not your destiny. Are we together? Oh, I met with this billionaire. I met with this one. Look, there's nobody I've not met with in this country. Can you help me with house rent? How does that sound? I was in a board meeting with the who's and who's in this nation. Sorry, my child has not gone to school. I'm embarrassed. I don't want to say it. Does that sound wise? No. You justify encounters by the deposits that are demonstrated in your life. Don't tell me who you met. Show me what you carried. Show me what you carried by meeting them. Don't tell me you, were, you met Jesus. Show me a deposit from that encounter that speaks today in your life. Don't tell me you met a powerful man of God. Don't tell me you were in T.L. Osborne's crusade, Reinhard Bonke's crusade. You were not the only one there. You must remain a student. When you get into the presence of knowledge with proof, minimize speaking, listen. Listen. Even though what you may hear, you may even know more than what you are hearing. Just listen. There are people, for instance, who will come for counseling and for 10 minutes they are counseling you and yet they came for counseling. Good afternoon, sir. I have a lot of problems in my life, but let me first share with you my encounters. There's something strange about me and God. I don't have the time. I don't want to sound like pride, but I hope you have the time to listen. So it started, I have this revelation. I see angels. Have you seen that kind of angel before? And, you are, and the person is watching you. So what brought you here now? Things are not working in my life. With the angels you saw, Are we together? Humility is an antidote for shame and embarrassment. If you can just humble yourself, you will, you will, you will minimize the disgrace by many factors. Hallelujah. Sir, I want, I'm not sure you've ever heard about my situation. My situation is really serious. So what is the situation? As I'm speaking to you now, my landlord wants to drive me out of the house. I don't even know. I'm running mad. Nobody can help me. I, I don't even know if you can help. Well, let me just talk to you. How much is the rent? Yeah, well, he's increased it to 650,000. Can you imagine? And the person is watching you. What you call a mountain is what your eyes calls it, which is what your mind calls it. To an ant, a mole hill is a skyscraper. To humans, it is something you just jump. Are we together? Remain a student. Remain a student. Remain a student. I heard Baba Adeboe praying over Bishop Oedebo. And he said, what you have seen, greater is coming. And I said, God. Greater? There is no time he speaks over me that he does not say greater. Is as if the faith God gave those people bah, till they see Jesus. There is no, there is no plateauing at any level. Baba Deboe is going all around now doing a light up crusade in his 80s. You would think he should be resting, and then he's speaking with joy and confidence. One day I jokingly asked someone close to him, I said, please. Tell daddy to be rest. He said, don't waste your time. He said, we'll rest when we're in heaven. Are we together? 
the strength God gave these people. Today, some of us have received impartation of that spirit of might. There are people who cannot stand for one hour. They must sit down. How old are you? 28. <laughs> it's not a weight problem. It's just that the capacity to do this work, you did not receive it. And you despise those who have been standing before you were born. They've stood on all kinds of platforms, under all kinds of conditions. You did not contact the spirit of might. Say in the name of Jesus. Amen. Shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. Amen. I remain a learner. Amen. I remain a student. Amen. Yes, sir. You are a great man of God. I agree, but remain a student. When you step into the presence of greatness, don't feel mediocre, but listen. Listen and learn. You enter the midst of prosperous people, listen and learn. You have the opportunity, ask questions. Sir, this is the level I am in ministry. God has helped us. If there's any advice you would give me, what would it be? And they look at your sense of honor. You come and park an expensive car outside and you are talking to someone who is blessed. And the person wants to shake you like colleagues and you jokingly receive it and say, Sir, please, if there is one advice you would give me at this point in my life, and they start pouring from their spirits and leave you wiser. They compress 10 years in a 10 minutes discussion. Profitable followership. Every time the student is ready, the teacher shows up. Did you hear what I said? Every time the student is ready, the teacher shows up. Let me give you one more. This is a very important one you need to know. Profitable followership must factor the limitations in the vessels that they follow. Profitable followers or followership must factor the limitations of the vessels that they follow or the limitations in the vessels that they follow. Never expect God-like perfection from the people who you follow, you will be disappointed. Did you hear what I said? <laughs> this is hard, ba. Listen, no. Never expect God-like perfection from the people you follow. You will be disappointed a thousand times. Not because they are bad. There is this treasure, the Bible says. Second Corinthians 4 and verse 7, I believe that should be it. Never replace the quest for perfection with sincerity of heart one day the person you admire as a man of god is going to get angry and that day you will be disappointed seeing your admired man of god angry one day you may meet him quarreling with his wife or his child and you say how can a man be so anointed how can elijah be so angry and yet god is still using him and you will think God will transfer the anointing to you because you saw it. It will never come to you. It will still remain on him. You see how God works? By the time you report Elijah to God, God will say, I'm aware. Keep following. <laughs> now you will respect Elisha. What made the other prophets angry could have made Elisha too angry, but he kept following. Elijah, historically speaking, was a temperous man. For disturbing him, he called down fire. What kind of a man is that? Imagine that you are the one following him. What will happen the day is now angry with you? What then happens if you are his wife? Others can run away, but you are there. And yet God will choose to leave that grace with Elisha. Elijah. And the, the prophet said, I hope you know your master is going. They never called him their master. You know your master is going. The standard character of offense. Go and do your thing. Let him even go and let us rest. Hopefully one of us will take over now. And will be a correction to his madness. And Elisha kept following. Where is Elisha? Don't, don't make me angry. Sorry sir. And people say you are such an idiot. You don't have, you removed your brain following Elijah. And one day. One day. Emperor Elijah looks at Elisha and says, ask. He didn't say, my wonderful son, you have been with me all these years. You are a good person. What should I give you? Will you answer a man who tells you that you have been following him? Are you following for nothing? He says, I'm about to go. Ask now. 
what a model and he said I have no time I understand your limitations I will look beyond it there is something within you that my destiny needs and I will endure whatever to receive it is someone learning now now the challenge with the body of Christ and the reason why we keep getting disappointed is because we expect godlike perfection in men I am not and every man who has limitations and is not working on it must be a foolish man it is not the limitations of men that destroy them it is limitations unaddressed unaddressed that's why I said every man should be working on something you are struggling with anger don't just say I'm like that what are you doing about it hallelujah but the body of Christ will continue getting disappointed because of our appetite for godlike perfection in men nobody can stand that standard of God's perfection it is a treasure in earthen vessels are we together now yes I knew this from the start of the journey every time I receive from the fathers my eyes has no business looking at their limitations it doesn't mean they don't have it they are humans and sometimes it becomes clear and visible in many regards whatever you can adjust adjust for your own benefit but follow with honor this is the character of wise followership are we together all the sons of Noah saw their father's nakedness why the guy drank he one side with God there but he got naked and one of the sons called the brother and said can you imagine our foolish father when the father got up nobody told him they saw him he knew he said all of you come one of you has done this and he cursed him a servant of servants shall you be and you would think God will not honor it some of you have seen the limitations of those who have gone ahead of you maybe you pray more than them maybe you fast more than them maybe they have a weakness of money maybe they have a weakness of character flaws and you can stand to be saying yes sir and go in the secret and say this man is already dead he will not finish and later you come and say sir i love you lay hands on my head even if the person climbs on your head nothing will rest i assure you are we together yes. when you honor those ahead of you it is because you are not unaware of their limitations I have met men of God who I believe love Jesus but my God they are temperous if they are angry and you stand close to them they probably can slap you but you endure there are people who love Jesus but even with their eyes closed if you wave money they will open it <laughs> and yet God will not remove the anointing and give you this God bah just leave him all. He knows what he's doing with men. Hallelujah. I'm teaching you how to receive from the body of Christ. You can go for a conference and sit down. And a man of God can be sarcastic. You can ignore that part and focus on what you have to receive and leave. You can go somewhere and the praise and worship is not as powerful as what you experience in Koinonia. Don't sit down and start saying, these guys, now are for you all. I mean look at blind people plus the man of God said that is not your assignment your assignment is to endure whatever and receive it is the price for followership hallelujah I've gone to places to preach where I knew after that preaching my voice will also leave because they may not have the best of excellence but I already programmed myself I go there with a heart of honor and I appreciate them you would think that I was kept in a five-star hotel I'm the one who knows what I went through there but I give God glory in the midst of it one word comes to you you have honored us may God lift you and lift koinonia I shout amen I return back with that grace and you see the results speak my question is who have you ignored today and close the door of grace it has become fashionable to tear down people tear down men of God tear down successful people people enjoy doing it it's as if their credibility is established around it it is a recipe for disaster I assure you hallelujah I have met very blessed and wealthy people very wealthy people 
And even as a man of God, after I greet them, I don't sit down and say, kneel down, let me pray for you. I'm spiritual. But these guys have built things that I have not built yet. And while they come respecting me, I am discerning, Lord, what grace did you place on them? If this grace is added to what I have now, it will be an advantage for Koinonia. And sometimes they don't have to pray for me. I receive by faith. And the difference becomes clear that something has been added to what is upon me. Can I tell you, after this meeting, go back home and together with God, repent from being a contributor to the pain of the people who invest in leading you. If you have caused pain to anybody whose lives you have modeled or you are modeling, go and ask God for forgiveness. Otherwise, a harvest of it is being programmed to your own future. It doesn't matter whether you are treated well or not. It doesn't matter whether people insult you or not. Yours is God will vindicate you. You have your own destiny. If you call me stupid and I call you stupid, who is wiser? No. You see that now? So many of us need to be careful. You have insulted everybody whose life you admire. And yet you pray in secret and say, Father, let this grace come upon them. Do you know, let me tell you sincerely as we prepare to round up. There are people who have come to me for prayer. I want to lay my hands on them. And I sense like the doors of the anointing has been closed. I know that even though these people are kneeling down, they are saying, yes, sir. It is not genuine from the heart. I may just say, God bless you. But sincerely, I know that I'm wasting my time. It doesn't work that way. Is God speaking to someone? It is the reason why when men of God pass on to glory, you will just find maybe one or two persons who have carried their graces. And you are wondering what happened to everybody around them. May I never come close to a great man and yet not receive anything because of dishonor and childishness and carelessness. Take note of this third point. Profitable followership must factor in the limitations in men that God uses. God does not use men because they are flawless. He does not use men because they are perfect. Now, don't get me wrong. Every model must rise to become a model enough, worthy of emulation. This is what we advocate. But this, this campaign for godlike perfection will only end people in trouble. There are great vessels carrying grace and they are limited. And the limitation does not have to be something wrong. There are some, their limitation is that they are not enlightened. There are some, their limitation is that they are not very worded to be able to edit a lot of things. Hallelujah. There are people when they pray for you, you would think it's an idol they are praying to because they didn't go to school and they did not have the privilege of secular enlightenment. They only work based on what they know. But you look at that woman, you know that that mama is a powerful woman of God. It's just that she did not have the privilege. It's how she was mentored. One day I was praying for someone and he carried a bag. In that bag was oil. In that bag was water. In that bag was new handkerchief they have not opened. In that bag, all kinds of things. I said, how do I tell this person now? Just keep this. Let me lay hands on your head. I had to respond to the way he believes God works. One day they will learn and they will know better. Are we together now? I'm saying this as a man of God so that in dealing with people, somebody will come with oil, he will even come with a plate of food and say, pray on it. I want to eat the food as communion. Don't worry. Don't be too hard on people and say you are at this base level of thinking. Sometimes you just honor them at the level of their faith and let them receive and trust God that they grow. Hallelujah. A great woman of God, I will not mention the name, one came, once came to this nation. And after she was done praying, the people were disappointed. Because Nigerians don't pray like that. When she was done praying, she said, now all of you believe you have received. And ah, the people were, were watching. This woman, you don't know the problems that we have. Then someone came and collected the mic and said, now we're about to pray. People were happy. Say this after me. And the people said it and they were saying, now that's right. This is Nigeria. There are many, many people who come and when I pray for them, 
I say in the name of Jesus is done. You can see the sheer disappointment. You know where I traveled from is done just like that. And so when I discern that, I can say, okay, let me touch your head, touch your hand, and you see them agreeing. I carried something. Whatever your faith can believe, I will release it to you at that level. I'm praying for you. From today, you will step into unusual levels of grace. Now hear me. Every grace God has deposited in this ministry that you have not received in the name of Jesus, as a result of this teaching tonight, I cry unto my God one more time. May that grace rest on you. Listen, let me submit to you under God. If you have been part of this vision for up to one year, there are some things that should start speaking in your life. And if it is not speaking, go and examine these things. It is either you are not a student genuinely learning or you are not genuinely connected. You are just a fan, a spectator who comes to watch these things. One year, 365 days is enough for some things to start speaking. I'm praying for you. Wherever dishonor closed doors towards you or lack of discernment, I cry unto my God this night by the power that raised Christ from the dead. May God revisit you with these anointings. May my God revisit you with these anointings. In the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray for you. If you have programmed any negative thing waiting for you tomorrow because of things you have said, because of graces you have dishonored, because of dispositions you have maintained, I cry mercy on your behalf now. I cry mercy on your behalf now. I cry mercy on your behalf now. Please hear me. Every dimension of grace distributed across the body of Christ that is needed for your destiny and for the next level wherever it is across the body of Christ I cry unto the God of mercy may he gravitate it to your life Amen. hallelujah listen there is a harsh economic climate biting on people destroying people by the grace of God and with every sense of humility you have heard me say it till Jesus comes there are certain things that will never happen economically to this ministry it is a grace you should not be under that grace and yet it is not speaking you are hearing the testimonies of men most believers argue with God, argue, they argue while they are suffering, they argue you are done, you go and listen to something else and you are like, no, it doesn't matter. But you are the one who is going through a, an embarrassment that can be sorted. I pray for you. Let me speak over your finances. The kind of favor that you need in this season for your business, for your ministry, for the next dimension of your life, by the mercy of the God of heaven, let it be released to you now. Let it be released to you now. Hallelujah. A man of God reached me when he heard that all the auditoriums that we booked for these conferences, every single one of them has been full. Every. Canada, U.S., UK in fact for UK was within two days or so and right now the trouble we have is what to do with the many more that are yet to come and we've not started publicity and I told him I said see this thing is a grace when we say it, people think it's pride if a grace is on you it will speak if it's not on you you can ask it to speak and it will not speak and it is not for one man it is for the body of Christ this thing we also received it from others it didn't come just by luck. It was not always like this. Everything that makes you small, everything that does not allow growth in your life. Some of you have been around ministry for years. It has refused to grow. Business for years, it has refused to grow. I call upon my God, the God of all grace, 
this night, may the grace that brings growth and advancement, may it rest on you now. <laughs> Hallelujah. One of my covenants with God is that for as long as I live as a man of God, I will never manipulate God's people for gain. Never. Never. I rather lose the ministry than manipulate God's people for gain. I will not do that. If I have a need, I will go and cry to the God of my covenant and review the truths that I know, but not to manipulate God's people. When you see God doing certain things in this ministry and in every other ministry where you see his hand, let me tell you sincerely, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that that grace is for your taking if your heart is opened and if you are interested. When graces are upon you, they speak evidently. You will know. Don't be in ministry and you are giving excuses. It's because I'm this tribe. It's because I'm in this place. It's because I don't have money. It's a flimsy excuse. You open your heart and say, Lord, you gave these graces for the body. I am part of the body. I receive. Once upon a time, we had our crusades. We were owing. And I went to God and I cried. I said, God, I can't keep doing ministry this way. If I die of high blood pressure because of financial issues, or imagine that as I'm preparing this message now, the bills, do you know the temptation to manipulate people will come? I will pass the offering basket by myself and look at what you are dropping. You mean you, you are dropping this? Drop something again. Drop something serious. One of the ways to walk in integrity is to receive the help of God. Temptations happen many times because of limitations. Did you hear what I said? Temptations happen many times because of limitations. One of the ways to avoid temptations is to pray that the limitations that empower them are taken away from your life. I pray for you. Whatever has crippled you economically, making your allegiance to God vacillate, your integrity as a child of God vacillate, this moment, by the privilege of this grace that God has placed, I release you into a realm of fearful abundance. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hear me. You can have what to say, but it does not mean men will listen. Some of the smartest people in the world are the loneliest people. I have seen people even in ministry, men and women of God, gifted with character, with solid integrity, and yet nobody knows they are there. And sometimes I say, please, can I pray with you? What God has placed upon your life, all of us should benefit from it. I have seen people sing in passing. These guys are supposed to be leading nations in worship. And they are not even aware they are worshippers. And when I heard their voices, why are they here? Some of them were cleaners. Cleaning rooms and singing. And you hear the melodies. And you are looking. This man is in this place. He does not know what is upon him. Because they lack the grace for visibility. I want to pray for you. Whatever will make men know you are there. Whatever will make men to see the investment of the spirit upon your life and to encourage you and reward you, I pray, may the grace that makes this happen rest on you now. May that grace rest on you now. Hallelujah. Don't be tired though. I'm speaking over your life. Listen, one of the greatest blessings in my life today is the gift of men. One of the greatest blessings in this ministry today is the gift of faithful men, faithful sons, faithful daughters. When men of God come and cry their ordeal and tell me the pains and the backstabs that they receive perpetually, sometimes I, I return to God and I say, Lord, I thank you. It is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth. There are men of God today who cannot sleep. They can't call anybody a son. They can't call anybody a daughter. They don't trust anybody because they have been so wounded. They are bleeding left, right, and center. Every week is an episode of pain. God has given the gift of men. 
not just in this ministry but the gift of strategic people I was in Lagos this morning before I came and then came for Koinonia and I was thinking to myself while I was on my way back if God does not help a man by connecting you to strategic relationships life will be hard unbearably hard I don't know who has struggled in this place and you are tired of struggling maybe you inherited this thing from the families you came from in the name that is above all names I pray for you may a help arise this moment may help us rise 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 this moment now listen to me please essentially there are two principal ways God channels his blessings to the saints listen please we have a series on that coming but I want you to listen number one the works of your hands the first way that God channels resources to come to you is through the works of your hands whatever it is you are doing preaching singing business your job number two relationships these are the two principal channels by which God communicates his resources to the saints let me repeat the works of your hands number two relationships when God wants to accelerate your becoming he sends both he empowers the works of your hands and then connects you with strategic relationships. There are many people who have great ideas that they should not even be crying for rent. But the relationships that will help them. Remember John chapter 5. I have no man when the waters is there to put me there. I'm praying for you one more time if you have the faith to receive. The relationship that must be introduced to your life before the end of February in fact before the miracle service I pray for you this week may you encounter those helpers this week may you encounter those helpers can I tell you and I say this with every sense of humility there is nothing I have cried about in my life that God did not raise a man to hear me. I pray for you. The days of crying alone, without help, without help us, those days come to an end now. Now listen. In my life as a man of God, I have seen attacks in my life as a man of God I have seen attacks from demons attacks from hell I have seen demons I know the extent of Satan's hatred for me on account of the souls that are saved I have found my safety and my immunity in the world there is nothing Satan can do about what God is doing I want to pray for you because many of you when you go through attacks it brings you down the mysteries of hiding behind the cross, hiding behind the name that immunes you. Some of you, your companies have refused to rise today because of someone, something, something someone said, something someone did. When the words of men keep you down, you don't know how to be immune. God stands by men like a mighty, terrible one. When God places his hand behind you, woe betides the resistance that is before you. Therefore, I pray for you. In the name of Jesus, every attack on your life, attack on your ministry, attack on your health, attack on your job, this night, this moment, I release you to safety. 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 Every power that has vowed that you will not see the end of February, that you will not enter March, either killing people in your life, deteriorating your health, I call upon the God of my covenant. Anybody who will not give you rest, may my God clear them out of the way.
every evil mark on you. Bringing disfavor. Making people hate you. Listen, hear me. There are people who have this mark of disfavor. The moment they see them, they just say, I don't like you. What did you do? Just like that. If there's anyone carrying that mark now, my God, I just saw fire. I decree and declare, may that mark be wiped off your face, be wiped off your destiny, be wiped off your face, be wiped off your destiny, be wiped off your face, be wiped off your destiny. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh, oh, oh. Spirit of wisdom. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh rest on me. Listen, you are about to receive a grace now that I've not prayed for for a long time. It's called the spirit of might. Listen, hear me. You see this work that we do? If you don't have the spirit of might, you will collapse one day and die on the stage. Believe me when I tell you, and I'm not exaggerating, from yesterday into today till now, I have not slept. Now it's good to rest, but sometimes a duty calls. We had a broadcast to our Canada family, and when we were done, by the time I came, I was on a call that lasted over I don't know how many hours. And by the time that was done, it was morning, had to leave for Lagos, went to preach, did everything, returned back, now I'm here. And it's not like I'm going home just to go and jump on the bed. There is something called the spirit of might. There are many of us, 25, 35, you are already as if you are 90 years. If men like our father in the Lord can still be going around nation to nation, you see that now. Our father in the Lord, Daddy Onubogu, 85 years, this man is still moving around. When I travel to the east and he's around, at his age, he comes to join those to receive me. I've rebuked the ministers many times and said, don't allow this man. This man is my grandfather. Don't allow the, where I come from. You don't keep an elder for a small boy like this to come and receive him. But he perceives it as honor. And this man will stand. He's not holding a stick. He's not bent over. Come on now. There is a grace that comes on men. I'm praying for you. The spirit of might that empowers you for the work. Receive it now. Receive it now. You will not collapse in service. You will not die while serving. Hallelujah. The last prayer for you and then we are done for tonight. I decided particularly to close early this night for a reason. I want to pray for you. The grace to know what God is doing. Listen, listen, listen. One of the greatest advantage in my life is the blessing of the seeing eye. When you are taken unawares by life, you don't know what God is doing. You don't know what tomorrow will be like. Many of us just stumble blindly into things. You will see opportunities and leave it without knowing it is there. I want to pray for you. Whatever has covered your eyes, that you are not seeing what God is doing in your life. You are not seeing what God is doing in Nigeria. You are not seeing what God is doing in your ministry. I pray for you now. May your eyes be open. Spiritually, may your eyes be open. Financially, may your eyes be open to opportunities. Listen, when you have the miracle of open eyes, make reference to my teaching the seeing eyes. There are things you should cry about that you will be laughing because it is God making a testimony for you. 
if you do not understand how God works, you will be binding and casting something good that is coming to you because you just do not know it is God working. I'm praying for you again. Whatever needs to come as a blessing to your life, I bring it speedily to you. Koinonia, hear me. And I'm speaking to our global family. I cried to God this year and I said, Father, preserve my people for me. We are not ready for obituaries this year. Let me pray for you again. I'm praying for you. If there is any covenant that connects you to the grave, using sicknesses, using accidents, using plane crashes, using kidnaps, I decree and declare, be released now. Be released now. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is giving me one instruction. Please stretch your hands towards me. The Lord is saying I should speak over your hands. Your hand is a symbol of your productivity. Every good thing is received with the hands, not the feet. When I give you something, you receive it with your hand. No matter how heavy it is, you will try. Even if someone assists you still with the hand, I pray for you. As God has instructed that you stretch it towards me. If there is anything on your hand, that is a cost to your blessings that does not allow paracatos ke de paracati balatos yata krate ka paratos kates brente ke pereketos kalta brakata ligata shabraka parite peretos kotos e preta da bakata paracatos kata pregata in the name of jesus every chain holding your hand so that you cannot receive the reward god has for you i break that chain now I break a parakes kote balata. I break that chain now. Every blessing my God has released, may it enter your hand. 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 And that of your children. And that of your spouse. And that of your family members. In the name of Jesus. The last prayer that I want to pray over you again. I keep hearing in my spirit. Just allow me honor God. 14th is Valentine. I want to use this opportunity. And pray against the spirit destroying families. If it's not your business don't receive. But if you care please receive. For yourself. There are spirits that are dedicated towards destroying families, making sure that all ladies that are married return back to their parents' house, making sure that men who are doing well, when they get married, go down, making sure people make mistakes in marriage, making sure that families don't receive children. Valentine is not just the time of eating and whatever it is. Since the world has decided to celebrate it, let me speak a grace on you. Everything that concerns your family life, I'm praying for you. This week, may God visit you in a strange way. 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 Visit your family. Visit your spouse. Visit your children. In the name of Jesus. For families that have been quarreling, living at loggerheads, may this week be the week of reconciliation. In the name of Jesus. And I speak as a man of God over you. Let this be the year of strange miracle marriages. Strange miracle marriages. I say it again, strange miracle marriages. Every power that has vowed that you will not enjoy that blessing, let that power be cursed now forever. In the name of Jesus. Anybody who is around your life, wasting your time and wasting your life, lying to you and deceiving you, this week, may God expose them.
I'm not just saying with respect to love, oh. With respect to anything, not just love. Some of you are shouting amen just because you think I'm still talking about love. I finished the issue of love. Anybody in your life who is deceiving you and wants to be a Judas, I don't know why I'm praying this prayer. I say it again this week. May the God of my covenant expose them. Wave your hands to Jesus. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Thank him for the models that we have in the body of Christ. Thank him for those of us who he has granted grace to be able to be models to a generation. Followers of them. We are enjoying the advantage of following Jesus. But the advantage of following models, patterns, and references. To Jesus be all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. You are in this place tonight, and whilst you heard me teach, the Spirit of God began to speak to you that if the man of God makes an altar call, run and come to Jesus because it is your time for salvation. The Bible says now is the time for your salvation. Please listen to me. We have to do this. It is our culture to insist and ensure that everyone who comes before the Lord who needs salvation is saved. Number two, there are people who are saying, Apostle, I want to make my ways right with God. I do not want to walk out of this place. Let's minimize movement so that we honor this altar call. Whether you are up the balcony, you are in this auditorium, you are around, I have one minute for you. Please leave your seat. Take your bags, your Bible, everything you came with. I'm counting one to five. Come and stand before Jesus. Let him give you a new beginning tonight. God bless you. I begin my counting now. One. Come. Come to Jesus. No matter how far, come. He's able to receive you, to make you, and to turn you into a sign and a wonder. Koinonia, are you celebrating them? Appreciate them as they come. Hallelujah. While they are coming, let me make a very important announcement. I'm in Zaria on Thursday and Friday. Koinonia, Zaria, and that includes all within the environs. Katsina, Zamfara, Joss, Kaduna, and all of us who are within, please let's converge. Just one service. The Thursday is for workers. We're doing our workers retreat. So I'm only having one service and it's a Friday. So everyone find your way to Zaria and let's enjoy God. It's going to be a powerful time of revelation, impartation. I'm going to be praying for the sick and trust God for a mighty manifestation of his spirit. Hallelujah. So all of you who are in Zaria and environs, please get ready. Let it be a wonderful time. Send word to everyone that the Lord is coming through for us again this week and that it will be a wonderful and a very powerful time in the mighty and even the matchless name of Jesus. Those of you who are in front here, thank you very much for making this noble decision. That includes those following across the globe and those who are responding across the overflows. Please lift your right hand high above your head. Say this after me as loud and as clear as you can. Say, Lord Jesus, one more time, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight, I go forward ever and backward never. Please keep your hands lifted. Heavenly Father, thank you for these precious ones who have come in the name of the Lord. The Bible declares that as many who will come to you, you will in no wise cast away. They have made these faith declarations. Therefore, I speak over you in the name of Jesus Christ that from tonight, you walk in the newness of life. The grace to walk in victory is released upon you. I declare that you go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name.